to the Allegheny Northern in N-Scale, and today we're doing a product review, something we don't do very often here, but uh, picked up a new locomotive, something that I haven't purchased in a very long time, and not only is it a new locomotive, but it's from a very different source than most of my models, and that is it's come from Bachman. And so I don't know how all of y'all got started in N-Scale modeling, but for me, it was the traditional uh, N-Scale train set that you could find in the toy store, and of course it was made by Bachman. And as I developed throughout the hobby, now I got that train set when I was probably nine or 10, and I'm in my mid thirties now, so I've actually been modeling trains for, well, most of my life. Uh, and this, uh, this is sort of bringing back a little bit of memory here as to, uh, you know, that first train set, but I'll be honest with you, this model is not, it's not a train set model. This is, this is definitely something in detail wise that, uh, you're used to seeing in say, uh, Cato or, uh, Fox Valley, something like that. There's a lot of little parts and pieces added to it to make this not standard in my uh, you know, opinion to, to a Bachman model. And uh, obviously it's got DCC on board, which is uh, important because we are running uh, DCC on the layout. So um, this, is, this is one of their DCC on boards, which, uh, which saves a step and uh, means I don't have, to, uh, don't have to go too crazy in getting uh, this thing ready for, for operation. So the other thing that it has uh, is is sound, and I don't have any sound locomotives, so this is this is the first, and so I guess Bachman's still making firsts for me. First of all, it comes in a, a package that's that's very uh, very well contained, and I'm going to zoom in here. Hopefully, you can see some of the uh, some of the detail here on the trucks. Very well detailed trucks, and you can see the cut levers here on the front. You can also see the uh, MU hoses and, uh, you know, the front, I'm going to call it snow plow. It's more like a step plate on the SD45s, which is what this one is. Uh, you'll notice that there is a little separation here in the, uh, in the cab. Uh, I'm hoping once I get that out of the box, I can just push that back together. But otherwise, the detail appears pretty, pretty standard for end scale. Along the side of the model here, all the doors are modeled in place. And then the cut levers are also on the back here. And it does have the knuckle couplers, although if you notice, there is a baggie right here. We have the old hook, the Rapido style couplers. Um, Why you would have a, a layout that's running DCC and have still have hook couplers on, I don't know. But if you do, um, that is an option for you. And this model also has, uh, it's a dual, uh, uh, yeah. It's a dual uh, decoder. That's the word I was looking for, decoder. And so you can run it on a standard DC layout as well. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the package and take a look at the rest of the details. Okay, so taking this thing out of the packaging now, you can take a look at the front details here. You can see the MU hoses are, are nicely uh, molded in place as long as, as well as the cup lever there. The printing on the uh, car itself locomotive itself is is nice and crisp both sides you have the brake wheel it looks plastic but it's separately applied it's not molded in place it does stand off of the off of the model crisp number boards and then there's our back once again, we have MU hoses hanging down. They are not molded in place. They are separately applied. And you have uh, magnetic couplers. Coming up here onto the roof, you can see that we have our fan details. They're not see-through or anything, but they are, they are well detailed. Uh, so a little bit of weathering there. We'll probably bring that all out just a little bit. You can see there's nice rivet details. Sunscreens on either side of the cab. In all, out of the package, not a bad looking, not a bad looking model. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the tracks and see how she runs. Okay, so when you put the model on the track first, and as soon as you turn it on, the track power that is, 
uh, you will hear something that sounds like this. And then as you throttle up, you do hear it, the, the motor throttle up. And then we start sliding along the track here. And we're going to bring it to a stop. And the sound does come back down. Now you'll notice that that light on the back there did get brighter as you go into reverse. The reverse lights go bright, the front lights go dim. And then of course, just like all DCC, you can always shut them off if you so desire. chugging off down the track and yeah, sorry I put them on behind the uh, behind the station we'll hit the bell okay some other sounds that we have on our locomotive here the F4 button gives us what sounds to me like a dynamic braking noise. I'll have to check the manual to see if that's correct. All right. We're going to turn that off. We have a short horn and a long horn. And of course, as we already did our bell. Okay, so what I want to do now is now that we've gone through the basic functions of the locomotive, I want to get a uh, short train hooked up here and send it around the, tr the layout. Let's see what she does. Okay, so I've got her in about speed step 20 right now, and as you can tell, nice and smooth. Let's get that bell turned off. She does seem to be fairly responsive to the throttle, which is awesome. Um, and she doesn't really have too many issues. The only issues that she's had in running uh, has been in the snowy area, and quite frankly, those tracks are dirty, and all of my locomotives right now are having issues there, so... Uh, track cleaning is, is coming, um, so I'm not going to fault uh, Bachman or the locomotive or the decoder for that. Um, that's, that's simply a product of 
being just a little TLC on the layout. But other than that, uh, it has been fairly reliable in operation around the layout. Uh, I will tell you this, that there is no keep alive. So when there's a glitch in the power, uh, if the locomotive stutters, the sound stutters, it's a little annoying, but uh, you know, it's to be expected. And in general, not a bad little locomotive. Okay, I'm sure some of you that uh, are, have been to the sound forever and, you know, um, are looking at this little locomotive going, yeah, sure, that's great and everything, but, you know, so-and-so makes a better decoder, so-and-so makes a better speaker. Uh, I'm not saying that, that you're wrong in any of that. Um, this, is, this, is a, uh, this was a what-if purchase, and I wanted to see if this was a... Um, something worth getting into so uh, about a year ago i converted everything on the layout to dcc and um you know that was a big step and so now talking about well do i need to upgrade the dcc system and get into sound as well uh this was the first i'm gonna call it experiment into that and you know that little locomotive puts out a pretty decent sound and I can't tell you if it's the right prime mover and the right horn and all that sort of stuff. I'm not quite quite that far into it yet. Um, but it definitely adds a dimension to the layout that it doesn't have um, otherwise. So, you know, I think it's only fitting that the uh, the hobby started with Bachman and, and now it's come full circle back into, into Bachman. Um, this is definitely a uh, model and a class that I'm not used to seeing from them. Um, so I might have poo-pooed them as a, a beginner's level uh, model a little too soon. Um, but uh, now for $160 getting a DCC equipped, sound equipped locomotive uh, to get started, I think this, is, uh, this was definitely a good choice.